So you've come here because you might be sick of the cold in your own home and you've experienced radiator heating at your friend's house or perhaps in Europe you've, you've lived through it and you've felt how natural and comfortable and nice it is to, to be in. So I'm going to give you the short and sharp condensed version of um, radiator systems, how they work, what to do, what to avoid, and uh, we'll go through that and hopefully this helps you make a decision at the end of the day. So behind me, you can see a radiator on the wall. And so we're at a project in Fremantle in WA, and these are the most common types of radiators, these sort of standard, it's not a very exciting name, standard radiators, but these are the most common because they're sort of just normal looking, right? They sort of blend into the background after a while, but the most important feature about them is their price. They are the cheapest version. So you can get all sorts of fancy radiators, cast iron with the heritage look, you can get modern looking ones, you can get ones that look like spaceships, but they cost a lot more. So these are the great sort of everyday version. Now, uh, you can also get uh, tower rails for um, to integrate into these systems. They're awesome because they help dry your towels and they help heat the bathroom too. So they're a great option. Again, you can get really fancy ones or you can just get standard ones. I recommend the standard ones for value for money. Um, and they work just as well, if not better, than the really fancy ones. So we've got the radiators here. They're connected with, with valves. And then there's piping, which goes back to the heat source. Now, this piping, has to be insulated and that carries the warm water generated by the heat source to the radiator. Um, so it needs to be well insulated so you're not losing heat on the way and paying for that heat to escape to somewhere else where it doesn't benefit you and the house. So why do we have this hot water? Where does it come from? What does it do? Well, the hot water is the energy sort of medium. That's how we transfer the energy from the heat source to the radiator and it gets piped to the radiator, it goes through these little pipes which are well insulated and it fills up the radiator and the radiator emits the heat. It, it takes the heat from the water, it emits it into the room, predominantly via radiation, and then it cools down, it sort of sinks to the bottom and gets sucked back and gets reheated again. So it's the same water that goes around and around and around. So you're not you know, continually topping it up with water, it's just the same water with ideally a little bit of um, treatment, water treatment in there to prevent any corrosion and to maintain the system alive. So it lasts, say, the minimum 30 years that the panel warranty is. So why use radiators? Why not just use aircon? Aircon is definitely the cheaper way to go. It's great as well because it does cooling in summer. But the problem with aircon is that it's really uncomfortable, right? It's blowing dust around, so you might sneeze, or if you're asthmatic, it's a problem. Um, it's uncomfortable, it dries your skin and your eyes and maybe even your throat out. And the reason is because it's really heating the air and forcing that air around. And the, the walls and the floors and everything else in the room is still cold. So even though it might show 25 or 27, 28 degrees on the room thermostat, you still feel a bit cold and the aircon keeps turning on and off and you know, one minute it's hot, hot, one minute it's cold. Personally, I hate it. Why the radiators are much better than this is because it doesn't force the air around and it doesn't have to because it's radiating the heat. It's in the name, right? Radiators, they radiate the heat. But not all of the heat is given off as radiation. It's only about 50 to 60%. And then let's say 30 to 40% is convection. But the thing is, it's natural convection. There's nothing moving inside the radiators. It just naturally and gently picks up the cooler air, which is closer to the floor, heats it up and sends it on its way. And so there's not dust flying everywhere and you know your, your throat and your skin and your eyes aren't drying out. It's just natural, silent, comfortable and pleasant. So how do we heat the water that ends up in the radiators which heat the room? The two most common ways are with a heat pump, which um, harvests heat from the air or let's say from the ground with the help of a little bit of electricity or with a gas boiler. Now the gas boiler is the old traditional way and it's you know slowly getting phased out but it's still an option there and you might want a gas boiler where let's say you don't have room for a heat pump right that's a great um, reason why to get a gas boiler and also because gas boilers cost less. Now they're mass produced right and there's heaps of them so uh, if you put a gas boiler in, the cost is lower than putting a heat pump in. 
Now, heat pumps are fantastic because, you know, if you get a good one, they're quiet. If you get a bad one, they make noise. So you might want to make sure you get a good quality one that has a low noise level, let's say below 65 decibels. And it might have an efficiency of say 450%. And that means for every kilowatt of electricity you put in, you're getting out four and a half kilowatts of heat. Now, that's a pretty good investment, right? You put in one, you get back four and a half. This is the, one of the main reasons why it is actually really effective um, compared to if you just got a room heater uh, or a panel, electric panel that goes in the wall, you might have to put in, let's say, two kilowatts of electricity and it's gonna put in just marginally less than two kilowatts of heat out. But you might put a two kilowatt radiator on the wall, but if your um, heat pump is, say, working at an efficiency of 500%, and I'm just saying that for, um, math's sake. So for that same two kilowatts, you only need to put in 400 watts of electricity to generate that two kilowatts of heat. So that's why it's so efficient. So how much is it gonna cost, you ask? Well, to be honest, it's not cheap. And like I said before, it's cheaper to put in reverse cycle air conditioning. If you're on a budget, that's the best way to go. Now, the next step up is to have a gas boiler with your radiator system. And here in Perth, it costs about, what well, starts from about, three and a half thousand dollars per panel fully installed with a gas boiler. So just like the radiator behind me and with a neat little gas boiler on the wall and the system will work automatically, efficiently and it'll keep you and your family and your house really comfortable throughout not only winter but also you know spring and autumn which are pretty cold in the mornings and evenings too. Now a heat pump uh, system does cost considerably more. Uh, it might cost in the order of seven and a half thousand dollars per panel fully installed, but there's a lot of factors in there. So uh, do get in touch with us and we'll be happy to give you a quote or even a budget price to see if it's feasible for you and your house. A common question is, where are we gonna put the radiators? Now commonly they're just put under windows and there's thermal reasons back in the day with old houses, we won't go into that but they're still commonly put under windows because there's no furniture there, right? So it's just easy to put it there. You don't usually have a couch or something like that in front of the window. Can you put it behind a couch? Yeah, in theory you can. You can say, put it on the wall and have the couch, you know, let's say 25, 30 centimeters away from it to let a bit of air circulate around it. And it will still work, but it won't work as well as if it's exposed to the room. Direct line of sight. That's how the radiation works, right? The radiation doesn't pass through objects. You have to sort of be in the direct line of it for you to get the benefit. So how long does it take to install a radiator system? Well, on average, it takes about uh, one day per radiator panel. So if you have five panels in your house, it's roughly about five days of installation. Now, does that mean you have to move out of your house and move furniture and do all sorts of things? No, it's really low impact. So the guys arrive in the morning, the installation team, they'll you know, hang their radiators up and they'll do the heat source and they'll start running the piping in between. And that's usually sort of you know, hidden, it might be under the floors or in the roof space or something like that. And if they need to move something to get there, they'll move it and then when they're done, they'll put it back in, the, back in its place and they'll clean up after themselves at the end of the day. So it doesn't impact you or your family. But what I do recommend is you get in touch with us as soon as possible because what happens is a lot of people leave it too late. They wait until they get cold to call us. And unfortunately, 95% of the time we're booked out for the next few months. So we can't help them until next winter. So if you're watching this and it's still a little bit warm, I encourage you to call us now to see if we can help and if we're the right people to make your house warm, cozy and comfortable this winter.